Hello, everybody, and welcome into our Orlando studios for the final time this year. My name is Evan Weston, joined by former Orlando City Captain Miguel Gallardo, two-time Women's World Cup champion Ali Krieger. Thrilled to have you with us tonight as we get into this one. Orlando City, three games over this last week. They have the opportunity to lock in a place in the top four tonight and a home playoff game so long as everything proceeds according to the MLS schedule through the remainder of the year. Ali, what are you looking for in tonight's game? I mean, obviously, this is a must win if you want to continue to climb up the table and, and have, um, you know, this good confidence, this, this winning mentality headed into the playoffs. And also, I'm looking for Montreal to, to bring it as well because they are obviously six points behind Nashville and Revolution. So it's really, really important that both teams are going to come out and want these three points. Yeah, Montreal hanging on to a playoff spot, but their, their lead right now is very tenuous. I think it's safe to say this is a do or die for Montreal impact. And I think that Orlando City can potentially take advantage of that urgency and maybe pounce on those mistakes that throughout the season that's what Montreal has been they're a good team individually but they have made a lot of mistakes conceded 40 goals so far can another city play with those emotions can another city take advantage of those paces that they will give them in that urgency and can another city continue to find good rhythm heading into the playoffs we're going to find out in about a half an hour we're going to hear from you as well take to social media our game hashtag tonight is hashtag MTLVORL. That's hashtag MTLVORL. And as always, hashtag rain or shine as well. Coming up on the show tonight, uh, they faced an urgent team, this Orlando City team, to welcome Allie back. She wasn't with us on our last televised broadcast mm -hmm. because she was back with the U.S. Women's National Team uh, in that camp in Colorado. Yes. The first time you guys were together in, in, in I don't know how long, at, at least seven months, uh, if not longer. And what yeah. was it like to be to be back with the group and, and as you guys continue to work under a new head coach? It was great. Um, it, it, we had a, we had a really good camp. It was very educational. We learned a lot. A lot of the uh, NWSL players who had performed well, not only in Challenge Cup but also last season, got invited in and and were exposed to you know our certain standards that we hold each and every camp. So that was excellent to you know play with them and and to just get back together as a team and and have a have a really good week of training. And it was just nice and refreshing to be a part of of the squad and and see the girls again and it was great. I, I'm really happy that we were able to get back together. It was invaluable to, to have that time leading into our next camp in, in Europe. And you've got the Olympic Games now confirmed for July 23rd to August 8th of next year in Tokyo, Japan. I don't want to dwell on what happened at the last <laughs> Olympics, but we know that this is a major tournament for the U.S. Women's National Team. What is the path from now until July for you guys look like? Yeah, it's it's 100 percent focus on the Olympics and how do we get better every single camp, every single game together as a group, individually what you're doing outside of those camps to really improve, to work on the little details that you need to work on in order to perform at your best within the camp and then within the games. And so our full focus now is, is Olympics. And none of us have made the team yet. So that's so important to continue down that path of how can I continue to get better every day in order to perform every single chance I get and every single opportunity uh, in front of LACO and the coaching staff. And so the U.S. men's national team also getting back into the picture they'll play a friendly against Wales European based players are assumed to be making up most of the camp that's going to be next uh, week November 12th but there are some US based players particularly some Orlando based players that have caught the eyes of many US men's national team observers Chris Mueller and Daryl DK two guys who it feels like are just waiting for the phone call from Greg Berhalter at yeah, this point. I, yeah, I mean, this is, he's, like I said before, we spoke about this yesterday, he's a man uh, playing amongst boys, as, <laughs> as you can uh, see. Look at this. He's so strong, and he's just battling. You barely touch uh, him there. That yeah. was called a foul. <laughs> Absolutely, and it's it's so encouraging to have that, uh, you know, that advantage and that mentality when you play in your home stadium. You have the encouragement of the fans. Um, you're in in a in a bubble, so to speak, where you're very focused and everything's right in front of you. And as a player myself, playing into, you know, in our own stadium, I, I have that um, sense of of just a home feeling, and and it's more motivating. And you want to win, and you want to fight for every ounce um, that that you get an opportunity uh, during the game. So you have that extra mentality and, and motivation to want to win. She's well, motivating me right now. Just talking like that. Like she <laughs> really, I, I want to go yeah. and kick it, but I'm afraid I want to yeah. pull my quad on my hamstring. Yeah, for sure, but, please do not get but, injured on our show. <laughs> I don't think the lawyers would appreciate that. Yeah, don't rip your that. suit. You can't rip your suit. <laughs> well, this is the last away game of the year for Orlando City. They do have two home games uh, next Wednesday and Sunday to close out the regular season. But for Montreal, this is do or die right now. You mentioned it. Only 20 three points on the year on points per game. They are just barely above the red line by a tenth of a point. 
per game. And this is why they had a home game against Nashville last week. As we show you that now, there is uh, good news for Orlando City uh, lineup wise tonight. After missing five games, their uh, big playmaker Mauricio Pereira is coming back into the side. He is the subject of our public's ultimate tailgater report. Some of the play goes through Mauricio Pereira and also defensively is somebody who gives you so much, particularly on the counter press. And that becomes obviously instinctively into attacks for Orlando City. It's so, it's so incredibly important for Orlando City to have him back two games going into the playoffs because you want your playmaker to make sure he's coming into the playoffs with rhythm and confidence. Pereira will be at the heart of Oscar Pereja's 4-2-3-1 as we take a look at the starting 11s brought to you by Orlando Health. Ali, what sticks out to you about the team around Mauricio tonight? Uh, the solid midfield uh, coming in and, and Benji Michelle being back in the starting lineup, which I'm really excited about because he just brings that spark and that 1v1 mentality going forward. Uh, obviously, Tesho uh, continuing his um, good form and, and a solid back line, which is going to be key for tonight's match. Yeah, they take on Orlando City there this evening. This is the Orlando City pregame show presented by Chick-fil-A. Evan Miguel Alley, it is time for certified bangers as we uh, we got a good uh, good selection of them this week nice. as we're rounding down towards the end and hey it's an Orlando City certified banger to lead us off and what a banger it is just a beauty a poem of a goal he gets the opportunity just <clears throat> up and over Braguzan full range full strength never gonna get there Chris Mueller golazo and then in Portland against LA Galaxy, I mean, this is a, a, an amazing first-time volley from Polo. Uh, it, it was an incredible win for them. This was last week. My dude, Syracuse University's oh, own Tejan oh Buchanan God. for the oh, Reds. Gotta claim it. How about this? The defender practicing social distance right here. No we're close. He's got tons of space. <laughs> and how about Montero right there? Posh, I think this is the epitome of the banger. Bang, bang, golazo. There's, well something, done, there's something extra satisfying about when it bangs in off the bottom of the bar, yeah. right? I don't know. There's just a little extra. I haven't had many of those, so I wouldn't really know. <laughs> I haven't either. Don't Watching worry. Watching them, yes. Well, uh, you, we hope to see some bangers from the boys in purple tonight, and the man leading them is Oscar Pereja. Let's hear what he had to say before tonight's match. Oscar Pereja laser focused on being in the best position possible to be in the playoffs. They're already in, though. Montreal still hoping to clinch. There is a scenario where they can do so tonight, but they have to win. Let's hear from Thierry Henry ahead of his side for the impact. Now, Thierry Henry, one of the great players of his generation, was a Ballon d'Or runner-up in 2003. He's won 19 trophies in his career, uh, a guy who's won the World Cup, the Champions League, you name it. But as a manager, it just hasn't quite clicked for him. It yeah. didn't work out at Monaco. He's had a rough first season in Montreal, albeit under. Absolutely. I mean, he's, he's come to Montreal. He's really happy here. He's, he's the engine of their team. He's scoring goals. He's 30 years old. He's injury free. Uh, he's, he feels valued and appreciated there. And as a player specifically, I, I feel the same in, in that sense. When you feel valued and, valued and appreciated, you, you get the best out of that player. So I think he's performing really well. He's really enjoying it and loving football there and, and hopefully we'll continue to see that. Well, he's the kind of guy, Miguel, that really likes to get on the ball, right, and in those spaces. How important is Sebas Mendes tonight in terms of slowing him down? Very important. And I think if you're Sebas Mendes going into this game. You hear so many guys talk about how this team does feel like a family. And uh, Mateus Ayas, even though he's only been here for a short time, yeah already feeling that way and for for 23 years old he seems to have pretty good perspective absolutely and it's so refreshing to see because you know a lot of these younger players come in and, and they're kind of unsure and, and maybe don't get off on the right foot but he seems so confident and so ready for this challenge and I really think it's a theme that Orlando is having this year in in recruiting difference makers they want difference makers to be a part of this team and a part of this culture and club and I think he is one of them he's a great investment for the future and beyond and especially in that number nine role I feel like since it's quite thin at the moment with, you know, Dom Dwyer coming back from injury and then obviously Deke and, and Tesho kind of interchanging in that number nine position. So it's going to be really refreshing to see him out on the field. Certainly a boost for the uh, playoffs for Orlando City as well. We want to let you know our public's home gator of the game tonight is Jamie Port for the 2020 season. Welcome back to our Orlando studios. This is the Orlando City pregame show. Evan Alley and Miguel here as we take a look at this matchup in a little bit more depth. Let's uh, first check, though, on our Instagram question of the day. We put this out there for you guys to have a look and give us your answers. Who do you want to see Orlando City face in the first round of the MLS Cup playoffs? And as we have a look here, 
I see an Atlanta That's answer. That's a confident right there. Any. <laughs> any. I love That's any. That's the attitude yep, versus I want to I, I love seeing Atlanta. Uh, lots of Miamis as well. Um, I don't think Atlanta is going to be I was on the say, table are they being sarcastic? this year. Um, <laughs> I, I do see a lot of people want to see Miami. Miami's in the fight now to get in. We should note that the teams that are in position right now to face Orlando in the first round, you're looking at maybe NYCFC, Red Bulls, Nashville, New England are in that, that area, but a lot can change over the last week here. Let's get into uh, the last time these two teams met, though. This is the first league meeting this year between these two, but not the first time they've met in 2020. They faced off in the round alley. What a breakout season for the rookie, just 20 years old. He's been so impressive, and I think with, uh, you know, Orlando have, have been successful because of his uh, confidence up top, his, his strength, his mentality to want to take this position and, and really take these opportunities and, and do really well with them and, and prove why he deserves to be continuously in the starting lineup and making an impact for Orlando City. He starts with Daryl DK's performance. Ali and Miguel break it down in our Telestration powered by JetBlue. Yeah, thank you, Evan, and it's really been incredible to see his evolution in such a quick mm -hmm. amount of time and I just think of how important he has been to this Orlando City team to be where they are right now how many important goals and how many important assists he's really been mm -hmm. able to come up with and as we take a look at this clip here we see an evolution of Daryl DK he's becoming so confident in the way he plays and I love this play right here because I would argue that this is not exactly the best touch that he could have had but what I love about it it's the improvisation the mm -hmm. quick movement and his ability to just be so uh, instinctive with his finish alley and he's always taking his touch away from the defenders and protecting the ball which as a forward and especially in that number nine position when you're a target forward you have to hold the ball up or you lay it off quickly but he has he uses his body so well he's so powerful and he and his strength to hold up the ball and be able to protect it everywhere he goes and a true forward has to have this an ability to read moments when to press and he does this really well he waits he knows the defender is facing his own goal he does not have full control of the ball and he uses all his body to make sure he gets on the ball and so calm and so composed he just gets past him picks up his head and looks for the best option scans for the best option because there was a probably a two other players from Orlando City to put good a pass it to and he just lays it off so easily well placed well that weighted as well the pass but how about his uh, celebration here? <laughs> I, I'm not great. so sure about that, Evan. We'll have to see, ask him about that. You can see that maturity, though. You know, sometimes <laughs> he would just, before, maybe just play the ball across and hope for the best. And now he's actually connecting the passes yeah. and finding players and picking them out in the box, which is his, showing his maturity. Hashtag U.S. Men National Team. <laughs> Listen, Miguel, I love the celebration. I don't know about you. I thought that was a little harsh. No. We want to make sure you have healthy and confident going to the playoffs. Well, if you didn't see it, I'm not going to hold you in suspense any further. <laughs> Take a look at this a magnificent ball from Mauricio Pereira bringing that quality to Orlando City. Absolutely, and the timing from DK as well. Sometimes a lot of the forwards get off sides in those moments, but him coming across um, you know, the back line and making it really difficult for those two center backs to, to stay with him and, and the timing I thought was really crucial in that moment, and that's what really helped him separate and score that goal. It was a clean sheet victory for Orlando and the one great opportunity for Montreal near the end. Pedro Galese, though, just does a phenomenal job of reacting through all that traffic after his initial uh, action of trying to clear his lines. Just a key time save, and that's what we've seen from Pedro Galese. It's not just athletically impressive saves. It's saves that save games, saves that really go into the, the, the points. Let's go back out to New Jersey. We have Mauricio Pereira standing by with his post-match thoughts. I feel really good. <laughs> Pereira's... Uh... <laughs> Let me tell you a, a thing that we say in Spanish. El que sabe, sabe. The one that knows, knows. That's never going to go away. <laughs> and, you know, he can talk about those fitness levels, but this... He's, it's right there. It's never going away. And you can see that quality. It's incredible. And I love the fact that he acknowledges. He's like, I remember. I'm good, I'm good with this. It's still there. Yeah, it's only, it's only been four weeks. So I know he said it was a long time. Yeah. And, and in 2020, it probably felt like Absolutely. a long time. But, uh, yeah, he's a, a, an extraordinary player. It's good to have him back. It's good to have this guy, too, Daryl DK. He's our Heineken star of the match tonight. Uh, another game with a goal for Daryl DK. It's becoming a regular occurrence. Uh, he is turning into... I mean, he's already one of the more exciting American center forward prospects, but now a guy that just everybody around 
the American soccer world is talking about. Absolutely. He's a key player for Orlando City and hopefully a future key player for the U.S. men's national team. He's with such quality and power and strength and, and confidence now every single game. You saw the, the first uh, appearance for him against Montreal in the MLS's back tournament to now and seeing how well he's done with just feeling that pressure and really applying that in a controlled way every single game. And, Mickey, we t we've talked a lot over the last couple months about his advanced hold-up play and yeah. the things he does. But a number nine's job is to score goals, too, right at the end of the day. And, and now they're coming thick and yeah. fast. Well, seven and over. Hear from Daryl DK after his Heineken star of the match performance. I mean, I'm just... What a great answer that is, huh? I haven't done anything. <laughs> I, haven't done anything. <laughs> I don't know about that, Daryl. Yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Manhattan, New York City. Evan Weston, Ali Krieger, Miguel Gallardo, this is the Heineken Post Game Show. Without further ado, let's show it to you as we've got the full game highlights that are brought to you. Finally giving uh, Junior Urso Meg points. It did end 1-0 to Orlando City, though. Montreal getting one chance near the end with Boyan, but uh, Pedro Calesa makes the save, and that's the end of that as Orlando City takes the clean sheet win. Let's show you Daryl DK with the game-winning goal for Orlando City. Evan Weston, Ali Krieger, Miguel Gallardo. We're going to look ahead now to what is a heavyweight clash on Wednesday night. Orlando City and the Columbus crew, a game that was home game. Same with Orlando tonight. But this is a Columbus team, guys, that was just so good to start the year. They allowed two goals in their first ten yeah. games. But some injuries hurt them. They fell off the top of the table. Now they're looking to hold on in the top four. What do you see from this Columbus team, Miguel? Yeah, a team that's uh, really solid. They got really important pieces in the middle of the field. Nagby coming back for them is so important because he controls so much uh, of, of the security in the middle of the field, the possession as well. And Celarayan, a great acquisition for them. Eloy Room, a goalkeeper that's come in and really made a difference for them. It's a team that's well coached as well, and they have a lot of depth value. This is a team that you, know, you take one player out, another one slots right in there. There's a reason why they're still in third place after me missing so many players through injuries. Yeah, I agree. And I wanted to mention that they have so many lethal weapons. It's not just one or two players. I know Zardes is having an amazing season, but there are different players who can threaten um, any defense uh, in the opponents and in the teams on the table. And, and they're very disciplined. And I think that's so important. Discipline and consistent at this level is obviously why they're in the top four. Well, you saw, I mean, you mentioned Jesse. Do what they've been doing all year. They're going to play at home in the playoffs. It's going to be an exciting matchup. I can't wait uh, to see these, you know, the game on Wednesday, but then more importantly, focus on playoffs. And, you know, any, playing any team is going to be incredible, but they have to win and they have to have that same mentality.